In Commander, there are tons of powerful cards, from Smothering Tithe to Blasphemous Act to Mana Drain, Runus Ultimatum, Animate Dead, and The Great Hinge. But a lot of them are really expensive, and even $5 for a single card, that's still kind of a lot. Like, it may seem cheap to enfranchise players, but to the average person starting out, that's going to be a lot. That's where Evelyn the Covetous comes in. Now, you might be asking yourself, Bean, how are you going to play a three-color commander on a $10 budget? Won't all the lands be an embarrassment? They'll all enter tapped, and that'll set you a whole turn behind. And to that, I will respond by pointing out that Evelyn is not a three-color commander. She's a one, two, or three-color commander due to the way that hybrid mana works. You can just play two colors, and that's what I did. In fact, she's like the perfect commander for a new player, since all she really wants is low mana vampires and some instant speed spells. And most low mana vampires are pretty cheap. Well, pretty much all of them, actually. But in order for those to do anything, you're going to want to cast Evelyn first. And how do you do that? Well, you ramp into her. At the two mana, we have Charcoal Diamond, Ebony Fly, Guardian Idol, Prismatic Lens, and Sky Diamond. These are all pretty cheap, even the most expensive of them, Prismatic Lens, coming at it under 50 cents. And if one of these is in your opening hand, it puts you an extra turn ahead of the table. Now, another turn to play that I really like in budget decks is Armillary Sphere. Because for two mana, you can play it. And then for two mana, if you don't have any more lands, you can sack it and then play a land off of it. And the next turn you play a land. And so it's not just that it draws two cards for four mana, which is kind of bad, it's that it can draw you two cards on turn three, and they can be lands, and you can keep hands that don't really have lands in them. Uh, but moving on, we have three mana ramp, which I have been told is bad, okay? I understand. But the fact that they help you get Evelyn out early makes them worth it. And in the late game, they can draw you cards. As for vampires, we have five one mana vampires. Here they are, the most interesting one is Viseraseer, which I'll talk about in a minute. But if you have a big board, Indulgent Aristocrat can grow your board. In two mana vampires, we have four of them. Out of these, Blood Priest and Blood Seeker can drain your opponents, and Dusk Legion Zealot draws you a card. So does Callous Blood Mage, which is one of the two three mana vampires. Men and Assassin is in the deck because it's very cheap, and it does a very budget <laughs> impression of Vampire Nighthawk and Nighthawk Scavenger. Midnight Assassin is just fine, it's a death touch flyer. That's what we want. And then we have our five plus mana vampires. These vampires, when they come down, they really they really do stuff, right? Anna one. He makes your opponents have to sack a non-vampire creature each turn. Unless you've gained control of some of their creatures. Bloodline Necromancer, it's almost always gonna get you two vampires for one. Champion of Dusks, usually gonna draw you two or three cards. Very good. Malakar Blood Witch is just insane. Like like you have a board of five vampires, it's gonna gain you fifteen life, drain everyone for five. If you flicker it, that's a you do that again. So good. <laughs> and then Butcher of Malakir makes it so that your opponents will not have a board, usually. And it gets around indestructible. But isn't there a way to get even more vampires? And that's where the best card of the deck comes in, Call the Bloodline. Call the Bloodline lets you discard a card, put a 1-1 Vampire Knight token onto the battlefield, and you can do this once a turn. Any turn. Your turn. Your opponent's turn. Your cat's turn. Why is your cat playing magic? You could do it then too, though. And here's the thing with Evelyn. Whenever a vampire enters, it like draws you four cards, but you can only play one a turn with Evelyn, but that's each turn, so you can do that on your opponent's turns too if you have some instants in there. And of course, if you have a vampire in there, you can play it and then get another additional card for each player. There's no way you're going to cast all the cards you get with Evelyn, but it gives you lots of choices, and that's amazing. And like, <laughs> I think I would rather have too many cards to be able to cast them all than too few, which is why we have so much ramp. But like I said, Evelyn only you cast one spell each turn. But if you have instants or flash spells, you can cast spells on your opponent's turns. And while you're casting spells on your opponent's turns, why don't I tell you about mind control effects? Because you know what? They're actually surprisingly cheap, and uh, we run five of them. Uh, these two grab anything we want, the other ones hit creatures, and of course we need board wipes. Ideally, we'll be casting our opponent's board wipes because this deck only runs four, but that's because. Oh, wait, time of ice system board wipe? What's that doing here? <laughs> So these are three really budget board wipes that allow us to keep Evelyn in play or return her after she dies. This whole deck is really centered around Evelyn. We don't want to be sweeping the board and killing our Evelyn and making her cost a bunch. And um, with that said, that's the deck. See you guys in the next one.